Okay, okay, Tell yeah. us a little bit about what what you did today and what you thought of your performance and what, what all what drills did you do today? So I participated in every drill from the vert, the vertical jump, the broad jump, the three cone drill, the um five ten the oh the five ten five drill, the um three cone drill too. Um I did my 40 yard dash. No, so I participated in everything. And one thing I would say about myself is that. I felt like I did a really good job out there, you know. I trusted my training and went out there and tried to perform at a high level, you know, take advantage of the opportunity. And as long as I woke up that field with a smile on my face and my head high, I felt like I did a really good job. Hey, Frank, uh, good, to, good, to, good to see you in here again. Good to see uh, you, too. <laughs> 2020 obviously was crazy, not only for you, but for ASU, for the entire uh college football world. Can you walk me through, um, you know, the last few months of 2020 and what, what would you going through and just the whole process of deciding um, to enter the NFL draft? Yeah, you know, it was tough. It was tough, you know, just because when you become, when you get announced that you're going to be a go-to guy, you start working at a different level, especially during the offseason. I would say like that past offseason, I was playing in every inch, every effort, every sweat, every blood, they tear to come and have a great season, you know, just to try to go out there and keep the legacy going like Brandon Ayuk and um, Nikhil Harry. But, you know, it got to the point where I didn't try to compare my success to theirs. And due to the fact that we didn't have a season, yeah, it was frustrating and stressful, you know, just because I just wanted to go out there and just be great and do a lot of good things. But I got the opportunity to go to the Senior Bowl where I had to put all that effort into one week. Uh, all that effort I put in that off season, just going out there, just doing it in one week. And, you know, I'm just blessed, you know, I just, just say I was, I'm just blessed and I'm just happy I got to this uh, this point in my life today and got to go out there and do what I needed to do. Hey, Frank, I'm Kyle with azcardinals.com. Um, you mentioned Brandon and Nikhil. Uh, when you practiced with them, did, did it help realizing that, hey, I, I've been practicing with them, you can kind of see how you compare to them and realizing that they made it to the NFL as first round picks? Oh, yes. You know, each and every day when I was training with them, you know, and they was being talked about being drafted. And when I'm when I'm working out with them and I'm doing the similar things they was doing, I'm just like, I could be a draft pick, too. You know, so when I get my opportunity to go out there and catch some more footballs, make some more plays, maybe I get spoken about going to the NFL, too. You know, but just being around them, you know, when they was here, just built my mindset, my skill level. And everything that they came and brought to the table when they got here, you know, because they was hungry far as where Brandon, you know, coming from Juco, you know, he going to come in with a different edge, trying to come out there and take everybody's spot and compete. You know, Nikhil Harry, you know his name, you know, five-star coming out of high school, coming in, starting as a freshman, his freshman year, you know, they just like that different mindset. So that's why I was able to, I was happy to get around them guys. And, you know, they helped me get to the level I'm at today. And I also helped them to get to the level where they at today too. Joshua. Michael and Nick King. Hello, Joshua with Bucks Report. All right, uh, Michael. Yeah, Frank, good to see you. Obviously, you touched on the senior bowl, but can you kind of expand on that? I mean, being around, like I said, a lot of that talent, NFL coaches, what did you take from that? What, what, what did you take from that? And then going in today, how did that help you? One thing I say I, I took away from the senior bowl is my confidence level. When I went out there and I was able to go out there and compete with guys from, you know, SEC, ACC, you know, and just like seeing different cats I never competed against all the years I've been in college and going out there and still be able to beat them guys, my confidence level has shot up in, in, in the sky. And it was just like, oh, if, if I was beating the guys, the Pac-12, and I'm beating these guys too, yeah. <laughs> I would say like, yeah, it's a possible chance I could go in the NFL and do the same thing. So just going to the Senior Bowl and having a good time and boosting my confidence level, just competing with these receivers and cornerbacks, five-star, four-star, people with the big name all over the media and internet. And just going out there and competing with them dudes, just like, it's nothing different, you know. Trust your training, go out there and do what you got to do. Always be yourself and just try to go out there and prove them wrong each and every day. Hey, Frank, did you have any nerves today? Did you sleep all right last night? 
Oh man, <laughs> you want to talk about nerves? Oh, I ain't gonna lie. The butterflies didn't leave me until after the forty. Oh man, after the forty, I just felt like it was a point when I was at the broad jump, my hands just start shaking. I'm just like, oh man, no way. But you know, once the butterflies, you know, left my body, I just felt like it was just like a walk in the park. You know, go out there and you've been doing this all your life. And just go out there and just catch the ball and just play fast. Just do what you do and just always be yourself. And I'm happy that I, I wasn't nervous the whole day because I probably have been out there just shaking the whole day. Like, people were just wondering what's wrong with me. But, you know, but like I said before, it's just a blessing. I'm just happy I got through the day. You know, they said a lot of positive things to me when I was leaving out the bubble. So I just feel like I'm, I should be in a good position right now for myself. Nick Hamilton, Kyle, Ethan. Hey, Frank, uh, congrats on getting to this point. Thank um, you. Two part question. First, first part is uh, what are some of the best advice Coach Herm Edwards and the coaching staff have given you to prepare for this day today? I'm, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I couldn't hear it for a minute. Some of the best advice Coach Edwards and the staff have given you to prepare for this day. Oh, some of the best advice they gave me is just always go out there and be yourself. You know, don't try to compete, don't try to be somebody that you're not. Um, that was one thing that always stuck to myself. And I remember he was like, he was pull me in the office and he and he was always saying to me, don't worry about Brandon, don't worry about Nikhil. You just worry about yourself. And one thing they always preached about me was taking care of myself, taking care of my body, you know, going out there and being a professional each and every day, you know, show show everything that I taught up that they taught me here as far as just, you know, being a great person, being a great leader, you know, running your routes hard, you know, catching the ball all the way to your tuck. You know, all the professional things so I could show them that I could play at that next level and just get all the, like, the little stuff and nah, all the little stuff I've been. Just looking. Excuse me? Oh. If you're not asking a question, please make sure your mic is muted. All right, but, yeah, to finish the, the, the answer to your question, sorry, but, yeah, but the, the, most, the most important advice was just go out there and be yourself. And when he told me, he was like, you know, it's already written. You ain't got to go out there and just be this person that you're not. Just always go out there and be yourself. And that was one thing that stuck to me from all the coaches and coaching staff here. And what are some of the uh, NFL wide receivers that you looked up to or admired that helped you? So, you know, due to the fact that I was at House, um, House of Athletes and a lot of former, like a lot of players that's actually in the league now got back to them. So there was time when I got to talk to Jarvis, um, Jarvis Landry, uh, it was time I got to talk to Jefferson during our route sessions. And, you know, one thing, one thing I got from Jefferson was just like, don't be scared. You know, that's all he's always said to me, like, don't be scared. He said, look at me. You know, I came out and went and been like the rookie of the year and just going out there with that confidence level. And Jarvis was always just preaching to me about just taking care of your body, doing things that nobody else is willing to do. And those like those like one of my two favorite receivers that that did a lot of great things, especially Jarvis when he was coming up, coming out of college, and just seeing what Jefferson able to do now in the NFL. You know, a lot of people doubted him, and just know that it's like that mindset that he created to go out there and do and do what he did this past year. Frank, obviously, you know, is on the Cardinals, and are you, are you close with him? I'm wondering if he's given you any advice through this process. And also, if, are you? Do you have any relationship with any of the Cardinals receivers? I don't have no other relationships with none of the Cardinals receivers. But Eno, Eno, my boy. You know, like we, you could probably say that me and Eno best friends. You know, we we been we was committed to Iowa together at one point, and then they took our scholarships away. Then we came to Arizona. Then I came to Arizona State. Then he came the year after, and I just felt like it was just destined for us to be on a team together and just you know build that bond. And one thing I was talking to him yesterday at the spring bowl and he was just like, no pressure, Frank, no pressure. Go out there, run what you run, lift what you lift. But, you know, you got a lot of, you know, you got a lot of film and a lot of great things you put on film. So he was also preaching, telling me and preaching to me, like, don't, don't be scared, no pressure. Just go out there and do what you need to do. Hey, Frank, of course, Arizona State fans know you for what you've done in, in Tempe, but what do you think, as Frank Darby, can you bring to an NFL team from day one? So one thing I can say is my toughness and my also the energy I bring. You know, 
I'm going to go out there with energy that that's going to push other players to be great and play at their high level each and every day at practice. I'm also tough enough to go out there and play special teams and probably <laughs> coach up the best special teams NFL team can have, you know. That's just one thing about me. It's just like my energy and the way I compete and the passion I have to go out there and play football, you know. And you just know me just going in there, just being who I, being who I am, I just know a lot of guys gonna follow my lead and know that this is a job that just can't like it's a job that could also be given taken away from you. So you always gotta go out there and play at a high level each and every day, practice, game day, and also high level when you're going out there to take care of your body. And that's just one thing I know I'm gonna just have a reflect on a lot of players on my team. Joshua with Bucks Report, followed by Hode. Hey Frank, how are we doing? Sorry about that earlier. How you doing? Uh just Quick question. Obviously, you have the coaches there, but uh, has there been anyone in the league that, you know, besides Nikhil or Brandon Ayuk that kind of, you know, giving you tips or advice on what to expect throughout the pro day and in the pre-draft process? And then uh, have you spoken to the Buccaneers at all? He said the Buccaneers? Yeah. Yes, the Buccaneers. Have you spoke to the Buccaneers? Have I spoke to the Buccaneers? Um, no, I haven't. I spoke to the Buccaneers in our little 15-minute 15 uh, 15 meetings at the Senior Bowl. But I didn't get like a second one with them yet. Um, but far as with the NFL guys, I would say like no. I would mainly like to go and talk to the people I already got the relationship with, and that was like Brandon Nikhil, Eno, and um, I just go to them because they've been through the process pre like recently, and I always went to them to ask them like what to expect up there, what I need to do. And one thing, one person that always like really was big on it, always calling me and letting me know about it is Brandon. He always telling like this ain't nothing to play with, friend. You gotta take care of your body. You gotta be here. You gotta be there. You know, you gotta do the right thing or every time. And then he also was preaching to me about opportunities. You know, he said, You if you don't hit the opportunity that they give into you in practice, they're not gonna call it for you in the game, Frank. So make sure you capitalize on everything they give you when you get up there at the next level and just always be you and always be great. Frank, as uh, you're entering uh, the new chapter of your football career, what do you want your legacy at Arizona State to be? What do you want the ASU fans to remember you by? This high energy guy. That's a whole lot want them to remember me by. And you know the logo I made. You know, stupid swole. Like one thing that's a person, <laughs> a person like me. You know, just always had that energy each and every day. You know, they probably can remember me about Big Smiley because I'm always smiling when you see me. You know, but you know, just that energy guy that came in and did what he needed to do. And also the deep threat, you know, somebody that's going to go out there and chase the game. That's how I really want to re be remembered here at ASU. The person that always went deep to catch the deep threat for us, always had energy to push everybody else, and also a great person, you know, to always be around. Ethan and Michelle. Yeah, talking about your legacy at Arizona State, what are some of your favorite memories from, from Tempe? Oh. One of my favorite memories was Oregon game my junior season when we when we took them down. Um, another memory was I forget it had to be my freshman year here when we beat Washington and they was ranked. Uh, that was another big game. That was like one of my because they stormed the field. It was crazy that year. Um, another memory when Michigan State came out here and thinking they could play in the hot sun, <laughs> and we and we was able to beat them. And uh, it was just a lot of great games here played. And also, it was a lot of great memories in the weight room and the locker room with my teammates. So, there was a lot of great things that happened this year. And I'm just happy I was, I'm a Sunday and I'm happy I chose the school to come to. Yeah, Frank, um, obviously, a lot of your teammates did choose to come back. How was it a pretty easy, easy decision to hey, turn the page on your career and move on to the next level? Or was there ever any a thought of kind of deciding, hey, I'm going to come back like the other guys did and let's finish what we started? You know, it was tough. You know, I thought about the, the decision I made for almost like since when they took the season down and then they brought it back. So it was just like me thinking about that situation. It was tough, you know, and each and every day I would just say like, I was just thinking about my family back home and my mother and my sister. And I remember going to Chase and I told him, like, if I got the opportunity to go to the senior bowl, you know, that's where I'm going to have to go out there and do what I need to do. You know, just take that risk on myself. And I remember just telling him was like, I don't think my family could last a year longer without me, you know, just being able to go out there and just help them, you know, survive with life. And, you know, it's just crazy because due to the, in the process, I had lost my mom, man, 
I've been doing this for five years for her and she went away with me, went away on me about three weeks ago. And I'm just happy I was able to like just fight through it, keep pushing for her and coming out here and doing what I need to do. And I just know she watching over me. Was that an unexpected passing of your mother then? Yes, it was very unexpected. You know, it was very unexpected. I just got a phone call when I was at the facility and I was just like, wow, really, you know? And I had to take some time more during my process. But, you know, I got myself together and knowing I had to keep going because it's the, you know, the most important thing in my life. And I know what this, she want from me. So I had to get back right, go back out there and try to stretch another two weeks of training in to get back to my way, get back to everything I was doing before I left, you know, and came out here and did and trusted my training and did what I needed to do. Where, where were you out training when you got the word? I was out in Florida, Western Florida, a house of athletes. Wow. Well, condolences, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's okay. You know, it's okay. You know, I got, you see the smile on my face. You wouldn't, I would never even thought of that. Y'all never, never even know. Cause I'm just saying with this energy and smile all the time, you know. Last call for any other questions. Frank, it's been a sincere pleasure for all of us. Uh, thank you guys. We will look for that smile at the next level <laughs> for sure. And uh, thank you for taking your time today to answer these questions. Thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate you guys. Take care, Frank. Frank. Thanks, Frank. Thank you. All right. Jersey strong, baby. Stupid Jersey strong. strong. <laughs> <laughs>